Please be seated. We welcome you and thank you for coming this evening as we gather in loving memory and respect for our friend Daphne. We're going to begin our evening with Robin Propp reading the eulogy. Robin has known Daphne for over 40 years. And then we'll sing one of the hymns in the leaflet. So Robin, please. Daphne was born in Saldana Bay, South Africa on April 13, 1934 to Betty and Tom Daniels and passed January 14, 2023 at Edmonton, Alberta. She was predeceased by her parents and four siblings, Leonard, Olga, Clifford and Adolph. When Daphne was a small child, she required surgery, which necessitated the family moving to Cape Town, where Daphne's father obtained work on a fishing boat. When Daphne was nine years old, her father lost his life in a storm while out fishing. Difficult years followed for Daphne's mother, Betty, with five children to care for. When Daphne's paternal grandparents extended an invitation to come and live with them, her mother accepted the invitation. They grew up there with many happy memories, without excess, but well cared for. While there, something changed their lives in many ways. Daphne's mother learned to love and appreciate the faith that her in-laws loved. When Daphne was about 20 years old, she chose this faith for herself and has kept true to that choice. Daphne chose to take a nursing program, another choice that brought her much enjoyment and a profession she would excel at. After graduating, she worked for three and a half years in South Africa. She then moved to England where she worked at a London hospital in an operating room. She eventually became a nursing supervisor at this hospital. While in her earlier training, she had read an article on international nursing. Someone asked her if she ever thought of going to Canada. The thought of going to Canada stayed in her mind. In January 1962, she left Liverpool, England by boat for Canada, arrived in St. John, New Brunswick, and journeyed on to Toronto. There she continued her nursing profession at the Sick Children's Hospital, working and teaching pediatric nursing. During this time, she wrote an entrance examination for admission to the public health nursing degree program at McGill University in Montreal. She received honors, which afforded her a bursary of $1,200 from the Ontario government to complete her degree program, which she did. Following completion of this degree, Daphne worked in the public health field in Dryden, Ontario, and Vermilion and Bonneville, Alberta. The next step was for Daphne to go on and complete a master's degree in health services administration from the University of Alberta, Edmonton. Daphne's thesis for this degree focused on ambulance care in Alberta. Daphne worked for two years for the Alberta provincial government, making recommendations for improvements to the ambulance service. Following this, she became the Director of Nursing at Norwood Continuing Care Center and finally Director of Nursing at Allen Gray Hospital. Daphne leaves many relatives and friends in South Africa and Canada. 
She loved her visits back to her homeland and was eagerly anticipating a return trip scheduled for this week. She loved and appreciated the friends she met with at the Sunday and Wednesday fellowship gatherings. These were important highlights of her week. She had a live, deep living faith in God and in the Bible teachings. Special thanks go to her friends for the love and constant care for her. There were many trips for appointments and errands that her friend and neighbor Adeline Nimpu was the chauffeur for. Dr. John and Audrey Guthrie were a constant support. John was the computer and technical support. This support of kind friends enabled her to enjoy independent living at Heritage Tower these last few years. Daphne spent many hours of enjoyment knitting and cooking. She loved to find healthy recipes. Her kindness and humor and loyal friendship will be missed. Thank you, Robin. We will continue with one of the hymns on the leaflet. Um, it pays to Sir Jesus, number 108, and Denise will lead our hymn singing.
Juliana will pray for us. We can bow in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you are a God of love and that you are a God of hope and that we have the great privilege of being able to put our hope into that which is eternal. And we are so thankful for the everlasting inheritance that thou hast prepared for us. And we think of thy son Jesus and we are so thankful for his willingness to leave his home in heaven and to come to earth to teach us how to live and to teach us how to die. And it's because of this that we have the privilege of having a friend to guide us through life's experiences and to comfort us in times of sorrow and mourning and to keep us when the way seems dark. And we are so thankful that we can pray that heaven would come to feel more like home and help us to be willing to leave the natural and temporal things of this world behind. And we are thankful for thy Holy Spirit, and we ask that it would be in this gathering and that we would feel its comfort and that thy spirit would have the liberty to continue its perfect work. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to continue with the other hymn, 272, and then there'll be two messages, Heather and I will speak, 272.
it's it's a special privilege to have a little part in this service for Daphne and um, I don't feel like I know Daphne very well I do know um, several of the Daniels family but I think back um, quite a few years ago now to when I had a little bit of time in this area and I'm just glad for memories of of times in in Daphne's home and the welcome that was always there and the fellowship that was there and our our thoughts are with family and friends that are not able to be here today and we know that that you will be comforted as as we are comforted in this loss and as I thought about this service, there were two, two things that I just enjoyed thinking about. And um, one of those things I, I just noticed in, in the um, eulogy that was read, just, I just got thinking about the, the different destinations in Daphne's life. And um, I understand from talking to others that Daphne love to travel and um, we, we read in the in the eulogy about some of those destinations her choice to to go to England to study and then her her choice to come to Canada and how that took her to several provinces in eastern Canada and then eventually um, her coming out here to Alberta and the different destinations that she knew in Alberta. And um, I just got thinking about how early on in Daphne's life, she, she became aware of, a, of another destination and another journey that she wanted to take. And um, I thought about these wor words in Colossians 3, um, written by Paul. He said, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. And Paul was making us aware in, in these verses that that there is another destination that we can choose. And I thought about Daphne at the, like we heard at the age of 20 when she made her choice to walk with God. And from that time on, she, she set, like it says, she set her affection, she set her heart on reaching an eternal destination. And she, she began to take steps toward that destination. And the other thing that I appreciated thinking about was just the, the friendships that, that Daphne had. And, and like we heard, she was, she was a, loyal, a loyal friend to many. And, and that, that loyalty will be missed. And um, Daphne, she, she loved people and she loved to visit with people but I I thought also that also at a young age Daphne became aware and and started to cultivate another friendship and that friendship was with Jesus and Jesus in in John 15 in the 14th verse he said you're my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. And so when Daphne began to walk with God, then she also entered into a very special friendship with, with Jesus, with the Son of God. And Jesus was a very loyal friend to Daphne because Daphne was a very loyal friend to Jesus. And and Jesus was a constant companion to Daphne along, 
along this journey that she was on, this journey to, to her eternal destination. And um, we, we can think of, of many of the many friendships that we might have in this life, but when death comes, these friendships are severed. But friendship with Jesus is one friendship that is never, never severed, but, but it's a friendship that, that goes from, from life as we know it into eternity and for all of eternity. And just one, one other verse in Genesis 5, this little verse about Enoch in verse 24 It says, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And we don't don't know very much about this man called Enoch, but we know know the important thing about him. We know that, that he walked with God. And I just thought about Enoch taking steps every day toward that same eternal destination. Every day he just took a few more steps walking with God, and the time came when he was close enough, close enough to that destination that God just took him home. And we could think of Daphne also walking with God and, and every day just taking a few more steps until finally the day came when she was close enough and God just took her home. And when, when we um, received the news of, of Daphne's death, um, someone in our field just sent a little text and said that, um, like we heard, she was planning to make a, a trip back to South Africa just um, shortly. It would have taken place... Um, just a few days ago, I believe, but the, the comment that was made to me in, in the little text message was that I'm sure that she didn't mind the, the change of plans. And um, I, I just think that if, if Daphne could speak to us today, and, and she does speak to us by her life, if, if she could be here, um, she would just tell us that the journey has been so worthwhile and that the destination is is beyond words. And so we just want to take these things to heart and um, to appreciate the the life, the the example that we have in, in our friend Daphne. I too count it a privilege to be here this evening and maybe I just would mention that the picture here was only taken three weeks ago and um, the hymns that we sang were hymns chosen with the thought of maybe it would be a message that Daphne would share with us like we're already hearing. Um, It pays to serve Jesus and the other one, there hath not failed one word of all God promised and when I was thinking of of sharing a part in this service um, we just think of a lifespan and we really can't put into words the value of a life and what it means to each of us Um, hard to kind of encapsulate a life in a few words, whether it be a short journey or long. Um, But the verse that came into my thoughts was a verse that is found in the last chapter of Proverbs. And in verse 30, it just says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, um, she shall be praised. And I just appreciated thinking of that when I was thinking of Daphne, a woman that feareth the Lord, the Lord God of heaven. And we think of that fear of God is is a respect, and it's also a love 
a love for God. And we heard that um, da Daphne, at a young, as a young woman, she made a choice to serve God. And it was because of a response in her heart that she had a love for God and a respect and a fear of God. And when we, when we love someone and we respect them, we have a feeling of need to serve them and to please them and that's that's what it means to serve God is um, to give our life to him and to please him and that that was in Daphne's heart and it tells us um, here that she shall be praised and we think of that and and it's evident here today that there was a respect and and uh, admiration for Daphne here. And we think of that respect um, for her um, evident this evening. And it comes as a result of, of her knowing a service to God in her lifetime. And when we choose to serve God, it gives us a value and a purpose to our life. And I was thinking of Daphne and her career and how um, you think of that career of in the nursing field. And that is a career that is a, a career of serving others. And it's because of a care for others and a desire to help others when they aren't able to help themselves. And there's many different careers in life that really, um, they're careers of serving others and doing for others. And nursing is a field where it's more obvious that there is that serving. And, and I just appreciated thinking of that in Daphne's life, that she, she knew what it was to serve others. And we think of that being maybe more of a, a public side of her life. And then she had the circle of her friends and the ones that she spent time with outside of work. And we, she loved to cook and to cook for others. And she served in, in that manner as well. And then there's a little different circle and the circle of her faith and of her fellowship and that was began by serving God and in that it mentioned in the eulogy that she loved the fellowship meetings that that brought her into um, the meetings that um, she enjoyed twice a week and she in going and sharing there she was also serving through her spirit and by her life and testimony. And, and when I was thinking of um, that she shall be praised and we think of that, it comes because of there being an influence going from her life, an influence that was for good. And we're glad for that. And um, when I visited her last week in the hospital, um, just a couple days before she passed away. Um, she was just so at peace. Um, there was just such a spirit of peace and acceptance, acceptance in her spirit. And I was very grateful for that. She was just quietly content. Um, just resting there. And that peace and acceptance didn't just come naturally to her. But there's a little verse in Psalms that tells us in Psalms 37 and 37 it says, Mark, mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. And we, we just think of that, uh, mark the, the perfect life or the perfect soul and the upright and the end of 
that will be peace. And when you think of something that's perfect in this tense, it's meaning complete. And Daphne found that completeness um, within the teachings of Jesus and within the faith that, that was in her heart in God. And when something's upright, it's something that's stable. And we think of Daphne, there was a stability in her life that you could just feel. And it was because of her life and the faith that she believed in, in the teachings of Jesus, and that gave her stability. And, and what it resulted in for her was indeed peace, peace in her living and peace in her end. And we're grateful um, for that and grateful for that influence that she um, she's left us with. And we value value the influence of of her life and what it can still speak to us today. And she's going to be missed. And each of each of us, each of you, have a very special um, connection with her and very special memories of her. And she'll be missed from our midst, but. Her influence can still teach us and encourage us today and even in the days that come. Um, we're going to finish our um, service with another hymn. It's a quartet that's going to be sung. And we just might mention that the words of this hymn were the author of the hymn he wrote this hymn when he was in Cape Town in South Africa. Um, that was where he was inspired to, to write this hymn, The Sweet Peace of Heaven. And so we'll hear the quartet now.
This concludes our service here this evening. Thank you all very much for coming and being with us here. Tomorrow morning there will be a private internment at 11 o'clock in South Haven. And so thank you again for coming this evening. <laughs>